Taiwan developed in Poland. And this is quite a big society country in the north. And I will talk today about just reconquering the world and killing all the humans. Or something like that. I hope it will be good because like my computer just crashed and has a kernel bang, so I have to like, say so to the company. No, why do you do that? No, do it bad. That's the first conference that I use Windows computer. I'm kind of, I feel excited, we'll uh, see. So, uh, I don't feel really well today. I hope it's not because of the party yesterday and over three years. So, and English is not even my second language, so just in case something will be hard to understand, or I will just, you will realize I'm just on the same bullshit and it's not true, just raise your hand and correct me. Yeah, so a couple words about me. Uh, so for last, till last month I worked at Mozilla on a project called Firefox OS. But uh, starting September 1st I worked for, I started at Adobe. You know, this great company that makes all those awesome open source stuff like CanJS and SteelJS. Anyone of you heard of those products? Not because of guys. <laughs> Great, so there's like two of you. So, um, basically, kind of just like, I'm not a better. And, yeah. Uh, and I also organized something <coughs> called, yeah, I made it. Nice. Called Omni Start. That's the first HTML5 game conference in the world. It takes place in Warsaw uh, most of the time because we had one American edition in the US and New York. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be now because I was invited here and you cannot miss such a great event. I was going into March. Uh, yeah, and uh, I want to watch TV shows. That's what I do like, in my free time and when I work. Basically every time when I don't sleep. And uh, I have this GitHub repository where I track all the TV shows I watched. So since February 2008, when they started tracking it, I was like 5,000 episodes, so 2,000, almost 3,000 hours. And I have also this list in here of shows to consider. So those are proposals sent to me by other GitHub users. So if you will check my TV show list and realize that I missed something that they really need to watch, that for my rebel send me a pull request. We did. And you will get free ticket for one of the conference that are organized. Or, I don't know, we can drink a lot together for what you're doing here. But, uh, I still have a lot of them to consider, but... Oh, you can also vote for some of them. So, like, you can fork and send a pull request with your name added to the proposal you think I should watch. Like, this thing called... Walking Dead has like most of the balls. Anyone watch this? Is any good? That's what I thought. Okay. Um, so, um, Jace, Jace, are you mad? Um, I'm really glad I was invited here. Um, actually, like, even if Bikov is the sponsor of the conference, I, I was hired after I was invited here, so it's not like my company, company paid for the stuff just in case you, you, you think about it. Uh, but actually, like, uh, it's a miracle I'm here. Because even if I always thought that our Slavic languages are quite similar, like Croatian and Polish, I can understand like 30% of what you guys are saying. How many of you are Croatian or speak Croatian? Like most of you probably. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, um, so even if my colleagues from Italy like start talking bullshit about me, I, I can understand that something's just wrong. Maybe not like everything. So uh, a couple of months ago I saw this tweet. And as far as I can understand, it's like there will be 800 people and they are probably waiting for something that happened in November, right? Least of all. And we have this word least of all in Polish as well. So, uh, <laughs> let me show you, where is your language? Okay, let's see. Uh, okay so we still find this 
stutter, right? In, in, in your language, that's totally fine. But when you switch to mine, Genetic uh, algorithmic. There are like three main things we should 
do. First of all, there is uh, the strongest unit survives in the environment, right? Uh, the second one is uh, crossover. So if we have two, uh, let's say, two chromosomes, two, two uh, elements that survive the iteration in the environment, that means that they both have something good, so the new generation will be mixed of those two, right? But sometimes the nature runs out of ideas, and it's like, okay, so I'm doing iteration after iteration, and I still have the same results. So it introduces something called mutation. So mutation is a random change in the in part of the generation. So like, let's say, there are, let's say we create changes, right? Or, I don't know, or lion with, uh, or zebra with a uh, fluorescent uh, neon uh, fur. If it's good, if it helps this unit to survive, that's mean that this was a nice guess. So we will populate those genes to the new generations. If it dies, we will not, we will not, right? And uh, what kind of problems are uh, suitable for, uh, for this kind of computation? What kind of problems we can solve using genetic algorithms? Uh, so, first of all, like problems that have infinite or almost close to infinite. I, I really love this mathematical term, like close to infinite. This is not infinite, but anyway, infinite or close to infinite number of solutions. So you cannot just sit there and, in an analytic way, think about if this thing will be good or not. And so let's. Uh, I don't know, it's one of those examples that like probably everyone did in college or in high school or however your education system here is like. There's this, this uh, we all know this uh, like shithead that travels from door to door and try to sell our grandparents old vacuum cleaners, right? And apparently programmers really love this guy because there is this traveling salesman problem. We all probably know what it is, right? Yes. So <laughs> So the problem is that we have salesmen that travel to cities. We have a list of cities, and uh, he needs to go for, to, through all of them and return to the place where he started. Uh, and we are looking for the uh, shortest way, right, to do that. And if how would it look like for four cities? So if we have four cities, it's four or five. Sorry, right? That's English. Where for this explanation not enough? Okay. Anyway, so it's 24. So that's not really, it's 1 minus 2 times 3 times 4. So that's not really even close to infinite. So we can just sit and calculate on a piece of paper uh, all the possible like, rows. So that's, that's not a problem we want to solve using genetic algorithms. How about the 10 cities? If we have 10 cities, it's 10 factorial. So it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 and times 10. I'm sorry, 25 minutes for this talk after we're briefing, so I will do things like that. So it's around almost 4 million of iterations. So uh, it will be hard to sit and calculate everything on your own, even if you have a like, factory for children in Taiwan <laughs> to do that. Uh, but you can write a computer uh, like algorithm that will calculate, let's say, one million uh, possible rows in a second. That's, that, that's possible, right? So solving it for 10 cities will take us four seconds, right? And how about 25 cities? How, how long it will take to do that? Anyone have an idea? So yeah, it will be, uh, if we, if we uh, assume that computer can calculate one million rows in a second, it will take 160 billion years. So some some numbers now. Uh, so yeah, if we would start at the very same second when the word the earth was created, we will be now not even in half of the first percent. So that's a good problem to solve using genetic algorithms. Uh, how it looks like? So we how how we prefer genetic algorithms? First of all, uh, you every possible solution is a chromosome, and as solutions have variables, those variables we call those variables genes. Then you create a random population, and you don't care if it's good or not. You just 
great and it's there. And then put it into the environment and test if and test every member of the uh, every member of the population against some fitness function. So you check if it fits your requirements more or less. And then uh, okay, that's exactly what I just said. So then uh, you need to create the next generation. So there are some techniques like extension. So the uh, weakest weakest units will be destroyed and will not populate to the next generation. Or tournaments. So you take a couple of them and they fight each other, and the one that win go the one that wins goes to the next uh, generation. And sometimes uh, the the member of the of the given population is so good that you just want to carry over to the next one. And uh, yeah, uh, so and then if you have some of the uh, some of the chromosomes in the new generation from the previous one, you create a new one to, to, to create a full uh, generation. So it's crossover, as I explained before. It's mixing to two or more uh, two or more uh, chromosomes or mutation. I already explained this. And then you repeat and repeat and repeat uh, till you have a solution that, that is acceptable. Like, so you repeat it like the 2nd of February in this movie for Bill Murray, right? So, then now my favorite part. So, examples. For some doubts, of course. So, we have this, I have this code in here. So we will try to force our genetic algorithm to write hello world story. It's not really hard uh, task, but it's basics to, to show how, how we should do that. So we have just one gene, and uh, it has something called code. Code is like a value, so it's the letter that has to the character. And then we have mutation function that has some random seed in here. And okay, maybe I will just run it and then explain how it works because yeah, so we can start looking. Then uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, so calculate cost in here in this example. It's our fine fitness function, so it checks how uh, far our letter is from the letter we want. So that's quite a simple example because we know what the output will be. And then, uh, so this uh, this cost is in here in the, oh yeah, nice. In 800 generations, we, will, we broke our work pretty efficiently, isn't it? Um, yeah, so there is also, yeah, this is a crossover function where you just mix Children, etc. My one of my favorite examples is to uh, is this one where the guy tries to create the best uh, vehicle, car, I don't know, that will uh, that will go as far as possible in this terrain. So we have the new generation every. <laughs> yeah. So we have the new generation every generation, and they just go. The variables in here are like. Uh, position of the of the triangles in here, position of the wheels and size of the wheels, size of the triangles, etc. And then, as you can see, this one in here, the, the fade-out one, is uh, a leader of the previous generation. So we can just see if the new leader is getting closer or not to the previous one. Okay. Uh, and after probably like 10,000 years of watching this thing, you will get some uh, smart results. And the third one, okay, the third one doesn't work. I don't know, it was yesterday. So it's, uh, maybe like this. So the guy uh, from Denmark uh, created an algorithm to draw a Mona Lisa painting in 100 triangles. So uh, triangle had like position of all the, position of triangle, whatever, and, uh, and opacity. <laughs> So, and the color, of course. So we start doing some random thing, and we can see here that after 27,000 generations and 400, 
400,000 seconds, we get one that is a little bit like this. Uh, so, yeah, that was my examples, JavaScript examples for this. But we have also real life uh, use cases, like this thing in here is a, an ENAC created by NASA uh, to do some space shit, I have no idea what exactly, but uh, they run the genetic algorithm for a couple of months and that was the result. They, they probably it's something with radiation, I have no idea, yeah, but yeah, this shape is exactly how it should look like, and as far as I know, it worked. Uh, how many of you ever played Wake 3? Nice. It's a bit good. I didn't see so much hands when I had to work on JS. Go for work, you just play. Uh, so there was this experiment a couple of years ago that a uh, guy created a quake bot with genetic algorithms, so they try to fight and find the more efficient, the most efficient way to win. And he forgot about this experiment. And he found out that the server is still running after four years. And so he just logged in to the map, and there were three bots in there, and they were just standing still. And not fighting, and he thought that something was wrong, that something was broken. But when he was moving next to the bot, they were following him with, his, with their eyes, all of them. And then when he attacked one of them, even if they were like uh, in opposite things, it was that much. Uh, if he attacked one of them, all three of them killed this guy and get back to their places and just sit. So genetic algorithms find the idea that people couldn't for the last 25 years, or 600,000 years if you are a uh, part of uh, that <laughs> the best way to win is not to fight. And uh, the third example is, uh, so there was uh, one of the universities somewhere in Asia, they tried to uh, create an algorithm that should create the best way to get from one point to another in three-dimensional space. So like, if you're a human, you think about, okay, first you probably try to walk, then create like some kind of vehicle with, with, with wheels and shit like that. But unfortunately, as a quick example showed, like, genetic algorithms create a solution, but not always in the way we wanted it to. So the final solution after a couple of million iterations was that this algorithm just creates a lot of cubes, put one on another, and then fall down, so the last one was on the destination plane. <laughs> it makes no sense for us, but it, it was, uh, like, the, the, uh, the task was, was, was solved, right? And, um, yeah, there are some uh, better shit on things uh, online about, uh, about uh, genetic algorithms. But if you have some questions, you can follow me on Twitter or on GitHub. I'm more, more active on GitHub than on Twitter. But yeah, that will be all. If I probably, someone will try to, will want to ask what uh, the framework I use for slides is Ingress.js made by Great Polish programmer by Christian Kant. It was most start project on GitHub for the last two years. And it, it's, it's really easy to use. You should as well. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. We have time for only one question. No questions? No, we don't have time for questions. You don't want questions? No, I'm quite sure you don't. Okay, no <laughs> questions. Uh, if someone would have questions, just find me outside. I will try to be secure from someone. Thanks. Round of applause. Someone is Filip Marinkovic, who is a member of the Czechy and the Czechy Sanalazi Meditacji.